All right, so for this final lecture, what I want to do is add the features to add to uh, to our app. That what we're going to be able to do is uh, send an email. Uh, one use case scenario, for example, is send me an email. I'm the developer. There's a problem with the app, or you want to praise me on the app, send me an email. We'll set that up. We'll also set up a way uh, for you to uh, uh, post over to Facebook or Twitter or any social network that the person has on their device. The use case scenario for that will be we want some free publicity. We want if the person likes the, uh, the app, they want to tell their friends and family, check out this app. So the person will be able to share that message to their Facebook, to their Twitter, Pinterest, whatever um, social network they have installed on their device. Now, in order to do that, we need um, we need a plugin. Let's do this. Go uh, to the web and search social sharing plugin Cordova. Social sharing plugin Cordova. So previously, when we added the barcode scanner, I had given you directly, uh, let's use this plugin. And I just gave you the right address or the code. Here's another example where, where I'd like to do something. So I'm going to look it up online. And I'm going to find uh, some sort of plugin or something that does what I, what I need. So here I need a way to sh share on social media. And the, and the secret is, of course, using the keyword Cordova, right? Because we're using Cordova as our, um, as our middleman for our code to work. Uh, the result should be this one here. GitHub Eddie Verbruggen social sharing plugin. Uh, so this is, the, this is the result we want. When you get this result, go ahead and click on it. These other ones um, probably are not it. So make sure it's the one at GitHub, Eddie Verbruggen, click on that one. I'm going to put this link in the notes, of course. All right, so uh, Cordova plugin to share text, a file, a URL, or all three via the native sharing widget. So depending on the device, it will automatically, once they choose to share, it will pop up in a way that looks correct on the device. The sharing widget on Android looks a certain way, as does iOS and so forth. So scrolling down, uh, this documentation I think is very good. The author uh, gives a very good uh, breakdown of the various chapters and how it works on different devices. So it tells you it works on these versions of these devices, etc. Here's some screenshots on iOS. They click the button, it'll pop up, and it'll let them send an email, Twitter, whatever. So it'll look something like that on iOS and on Android. Depending on the Android device, you click and it'll pop up, and then it'll get a list of what uh, services are installed on the person's device. Send it to LinkedIn, send it to email, whatever. Scrolling further. Okay, so the way this works is we've got um, the uh, Cordova. This is the name of the plugin, Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. That's the that's the specific internal name of the plugin which we will then add to in the config XML file. Remember, our config XML file of our project is where we add and remove plugins. So if you found that in the documentation, you can just copy it. If you didn't, uh, we can type it here manually in just a moment. So back in our project, config XML. Inside of the plugins screen on the left, and then custom. This says you can connect to it in a couple of ways. If you notice the documentation, it had it listed to install either 
uh, you have the, the link to the GitHub up here, github.com, etc., .git, or you have the name of the plugin. Add a plugin called this. So either of those methods are right here. The plugin ID or the address to git. So we are just going to use the ID listed there in the documentation. Cordova-plugin-x-social sharing. You can confirm it's the right one by clicking the arrow, and then it'll try to connect, and it'll show you there on the right side, right here. Share text images and other files, etc. So we're adding a custom plugin. That's the name of the plugin. Once you see that it's listed there, click Add. So it's going to connect back to the server, download the files, install them. And then af after that, it's a matter of using the plugin. So as it installs, I'll show you here. If you scroll down, usage. So I'm going to scroll down. It's going to give you uh, some example code. Different examples uh, sent, uh, shared directly to Twitter, or to Facebook, etc. Uh, or generically let the person choose how they want to share. So it's going to be writing a little bit of JavaScript, uh, and um, we're going to set various properties, message, subject, etc., and then it's going to get sent to the network. Okay, so after we add the, uh, the plugin, we need a button in our app that when we press this, it will initiate the process of uh, sharing to Facebook or sharing to Twitter or whatever. So after this, uh, save your config XML file and close the file, and then we'll open index.html. In index HTML, we need just anywhere in the app where we can send, uh, where we can set this up. Let's say we'll put it in our options screen, that little screen that pops up when you click the gear, how it goes into that little screen to uh, log out or uh, delete the collection. PG options. This is line 113 or so. Yeah, so on mine, it's, it's still the, the basic one. You probably have more content there. But in your um, PG options section, we've got that dialog box. We've got uh, the button delete the collection. We've got the button log out. Uh, we'll add uh, two new buttons here. Uh, one is to share to social media, and one is going to be contact the developer. So next line, we'll create. Um, can do a note here. Um, button to initiate. Um, contacting the developer and sharing to social media. It's going to be two different buttons. They're going to go right here. So we'll create a button very similar to this over here. A href to nowhere, data roll button, data icon. We'll pick a cool icon. We'll need an ID and then the text. We're going to say contact, contact us or contact the developer or questions. You know, something like that, some sort of message uh, to some sort of message 
that button will have some sort of text that will let them know, well, this is where you click to contact the developer, or contact us, or contact me, or however you want to word it. The important stuff is then we've got the attribute href pound. Doesn't go anywhere. Data roll button. Data icon. Uh, I always forget if it's email or mail. So it's mail or just mail. Okay. Mail. ID. BTN. Email. And another one, um, share the app. That plugin that we just installed can be set up in a variety of ways. We'll set it up two ways. One is when they press a button, it'll automatically email us. That's the first button. The second one is, uh, let's get some free publicity. Let's get some free advertising from our users. Hopefully the users like the app, they want to let their friends and family know about it, so our app will have a button, share the app. So a link to our app uh, will be shared off to their Facebook or their Instagram or Twitter or, or whatever. So similar here, we need href pound data roll button data icon. We have one, I believe it's called action, and this is... Um, an icon of like doing an action, like an arrow jumping out of a, of a box. IDBTN share. Okay, so if we've got a button in uh, HTML, we need to create an object of it in JavaScript. Then we need to create an event listener to listen for a click. Then we need to create a function that handles the click. So we've done that several times. Let's go over to our index.js file. Uh, let's go to where we've got all our variables and create a brand new object based on btn email. Okay, so if I open index.js, Let's say in our block over here of objects that we've created before, there's our form, uh, there's a pop-up error message. Uh, let's add another variable. So after the end of the last one, element user email, change that to a comma. Remember this, this uh, causes a lot of problems if people don't do it right. You change first the comma, because we're going to add another two objects. to L BTN um, email first. We'll create a JavaScript um, object here based on jQuery, uh, instantiate it uh, or assign it actually to the um, jQuery selector. Don't forget the pound sign right there. We've got a We've got that as an ID in the HTML file, so you need that pound btn email, comma, then we'll do the last one, lbtn share is equal to jQuery selector, quotes, pound btn share, end of statement. Be very careful there that you, did, uh, that you didn't forget to change user email to the comma, or else these will be um, incomplete statements and you'll get errors. Okay, so if we create these objects, next we need the event listeners uh, to um, listen, to wait for a button click, then the functions. 
let's go to the end of our code where we've got our uh, event listeners and we'll create something similar to what's already there I'm go all the way to the end and uh, line 726 we're just gonna create an event listener very similar to what's already there so dollar l btn email dot on method click parameter comma run a function that doesn't exist yet called function email same thing for our share share button we don't need to capture the event or anything like that. We're not uh, creating a form that needs a, a prevent default. And actually, uh, if we were to be testing this, um, we would get errors. We're going to do this email one first. So that means if we try to set this one up, function share doesn't exist yet. So you're going to get it's going to complain. There's going to be errors. So like we've done before, we can comment out that one temporarily. We need to remember to uncomment it when we actually define the function. We'll do email first. So the documentation uh, for the for this particular plugin, it's one JavaScript command, but it has a variety of parameters. And it's a lot easier to break those parameters into multiple lines. And the parameters are going to be like, uh, you know, what's the message you're about to tweet? Uh, what's the link you want to include with that tweet or Facebook post? Is there a picture you want to include? So it's going to be one command but broken into several lines. Let's back up to where we've got our... Actually, let's see... Um... Uh, we can put it right here after the pouch code stuff. Uh, function fn email function to send us the developer. email from I'm going to put the the link to the the plugin right here which is also over here so those are just optional there okay uh, so as usual, uh, to confirm that this um, uh, button has been clicked and is attempting to run, we'll do the usual console log. Function email is running. The actual command is window plugins plural window singular plugins plural social sharing all lowercase dot share via capital V email capital E. So the app has a plugin, the social sharing plugin, and it has the method share via email. We can uh, share in a variety of ways or let the user choose how they're going to share. And here it's sort of a misnomer. We're not, they're not actually going to share anything. They're going to contact us. But this plugin works to also activate the person's built-in email client. Uh, they'll click that, the email client will pop up and send, and it'll be set up to send us, the developer, an email directly. 
It's just that it's part of the same plugin that will, in a moment, allow us to share to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And um, it's going to be this method, but this then has like eight parameters that we should fill in. So the way we will do it is uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set up the placeholders for the parameters with comments, then we'll fill in the details. So I'm going to break apart those parentheses. And what we need first is going to be message body, this is a string, comma. Next we've got message subject field, this is a string. This is all coming from the documentation, so in a moment we're going to fill this in on the left side. But what this is doing is it's setting up the ability for the person to send us an email, and we can fill in these various fields of an email. Here, the next one is going to be the to field as an array of strings. We'll explain that in a moment. We can also then do cc. Who else to email? as an array of strings. So when you, uh, when you send an email, uh, the to field is who you're sending it to, right? The CC field, what, the CC field is who else are you, co are you copying this to? It stands for carbon copy. Who else are you copying this to? Now there's another way to send emails to a lot of people so that they don't know who else sent it. Anyone know what that one is? The, the blind carbon copy BCC. So we also have a BCC field. Send to others and they don't see each other's emails. Array of strings. So the idea here is the person is going to send us the developer an email. So we're going to put our developer email address in this field in a moment. It could also be copied to someone else. Maybe there's a different or there's an additional person in the company that deals with tech support. So then uh, under CC and the, the person, the user using your app would see who it's going to get sent to, who's ever in the to field and the CC field. But you could also put into the BCC field someone else's email address that the user won't see. And that could have various applications. Next up is attachments. From the WW folder, as a string, full path. So we may want to, in this case, um, it doesn't need an attachment. But think about it when we're going to set this up for Twitter. We're going to set it up. I found this great app. You should know about it. Click here and then send it to Twitter. Well, we can attach the icon of the app so that when they tweet, our app's icon is included automatically in their tweet. Here on the email, we don't really need to attach anything. But if we do, it should come from the WW folder. If you've got something in the images folder, in the CSS folder, we would need its full path. Success. And these these have uh, all of these have uh, commas at the end. Success callback function comma. And the last one failure callback function. No final comma. We can note it right here. No final comma. So all of these are inside the parentheses of share via email. 
So it may be useful to put there the final comment of uh, share via email end. You're going to lose track of that uh, parent uh, parenthesis, perhaps. Well, that was the one we had written up here, and we broke into the next line. All right, so for uh, filling this in, quote, comma, and say something like, regarding your app, the first line of the email that is going to be sent to us will say, regarding your app, or anything you want. You can do very, very simple HTML here, like break the line. So after this, then the person can type. The person can completely erase what we've written here. But if you want to start off the, the very first sentence of their email, that's, that's what that field is for. And that needs a comma. Because in the next field, in quotes, a string, we're going to write what is the um, subject of the email, comma, and then the next ones. So here is where we can uh, do something like, you know, we're going to fill in their, their email's subject line. So we can uh, put here something that we can, that we can identify in our email account. Uh, if you set up filters and such to deal with your email, here's where you can put in a keyword in that email subject so that then your emails get filtered in the right place. Let's say I'm this developer and I've got 20 different apps in the App Store. Well, I'm going to get lots of emails about the different apps. If I put in, you know, the keyword or the SKU or something of a particular app, my filters in my Gmail can put those emails in the right inbox so that I can deal with them. And the user can change this if they want. It, it'll just be filled in automatically this way. Most people don't change that, but if they want to change the subject, they can. Next, um, this is an array, so square brackets, comma, uh, an array of strings. So in, in the brackets there, in quotes, then we can put an email address. And the best way to test this is put your email there. To fully test this, put in a real email of yours that you can check, because when you then load it on your device, and go go for it and, and go through the whole email system then you can check did I get the email so you want to put your email there not literally your email you want to put your email right not your email but you want to put your email get it okay so uh, whatever you can put there to um, to test it with uh, yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your email, yes. Next one over here is um, if you want to CC this to anyone. Now, um, some of these I may not want to fill in, but if I wanted to CC someone, so don't fill this in yet, but if you wanted to CC someone else, it's the same thing. Another email.com. And you could do comma and then do yet another email. So you see the, you see the syntax of it. Let's say I don't need to CC or BCC anyone. You do need to put a placeholder of null because it's expecting these particular eight or whatever it is fields. And if you skip one, it's going to get confused. It's going to think, oh, you're putting the success, you're putting code in the field of email, so that's an email, not a success callback. So if you didn't want any CC'd, and I don't want any, but I'm just showing you what that could look like, I would put null. If I uh, didn't want the message filled in, um, I think we can do it two ways. I think we can just have it empty like that, or we can have it null. So nothing defined in there. 
for our purposes. You can decide what you want on this, but um, I'll just leave it like that just to show you that's what it could be, and fields not necessary are null. That is, fields I don't want to use are null. They're all necessary, but those that I don't want to use are, are null. Attachments. Now notice I am putting a comma at the end of each parameter. I have the comma at the end of the comment, which is meaningless because it's a comment, but you need the comma at the end of each of these. So all of them have it. If you're going to attach something to the email, it would, it would include your path, www slash, and then let's say you've got an image. Let's see, do we have any nice images? Do you have any nice images in your images folder? I simply have this Cordova icon here. Uh, if you have some image in your images folder, well, that's what you want to put to test this. www slash images slash, and then whatever graphic you may have. Now you could have a graphic in your CSS file or your JavaScript, but your, these images have to be whatever you're going to attach. It could be an image, a PDF, etc. But it's got to be inside the WW folder. So you, you probably have a cool icon in your res folder, but you cannot write a path outside of the WW folder. Even though you could write res slash whatever, it will ignore it. So if you want to borrow one of your cool images from the res folder, you need to copy it. Right? You can right click copy, depending how you want to do this. You need to have a copy of these res icons if you want to test this. You can right click copy and put it in your images folder and then write a path to that, <coughs> to that image. Right click copy from one folder, right click paste to another. Yes. Exactly. Well, the user could further make another attachment if they want. In our case, again, there's not much of a use to do our own attachment. Uh, I'm just showing you this is how we would add an attachment if we needed one. And the user can then further add their own attachments if they want. So this is work all the users? Yeah, exactly. So everyone that's in the 2CC and BCC is going to get all of this. Let's just say, in my case, just to fully test it, that's how mine is. If you don't have that image in there, then if you don't have this image in your images folder, then copy it in there or use a different one, whatever you'd like. Or if you don't want to attach any image, how do you how do you do that? No. So if you don't want any image, just put no. It has to be in the team format. No, it can be just about any format, ping, JPEG, TXT, PDF. It can be just about any attachment. OK, then the last two here. OK, what happens when you successfully send the email? And what happens when there's a failure? So we will have here a function, an anonymous function, comma. Another anonymous function, no final comma. So after the attachment, comma, anonymous function to deal with success, object, comma, anonymous function to deal with failure, object, no final comma. So that means. This anonymous function is going to uh, capture the success object. This one is going to capture the failure object, just like we've been doing several times before. Just for the moment, to keep it super simple, console output of what these objects are. So within the curly braces here, console log, you can say success plus success. Show me what that success object is. And if it's a failure, some sort of error, console log. Failed. Failure. 
So uh, similar to pouch, when there's a when there's an action db dot put db dot get, there's a there's a failure or success object that comes back. Uh, this is uh, window dot plugins dot social share dot share via email, and it's either uh, success or failure. And, and so here we're we're setting it up as before. We could do it with the whole complex if else failure blah blah blah. Uh, but here their syntax is like this: that what happens when there's a success? Sending the email, and what happens when there's a failure? At this point, uh, we can save this and test it, and we'll take our first break. Um, check your code here. This is going to run best on a device because the device is the one that has the email client. I don't think these computers, their Outlook is set up. I don't think it'll work if you try to test it on the um, simulator. So uh, I have one uh, final, one final tablet. If people want that, uh, and uh, try it out on a device and see how it functions on a real device. Again, to see if it fully works, you want to put your real email there to test it. And if you get the email from your app, then that worked. It's 7.35, we'll take a break until 7.45. Then we will do the, um, the sharing to social media.